ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, Sammy Phillips. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, staff has informed me that uh, for this special evening tonight, we have uh, a taped a hundred dollar bill under each chair, a chair at each table. <laughs> Okay, nobody's looking. Okay, that nah, didn't fall for it. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Sorry about that $100 bill. I know, I know some of you got excited about that. <clears throat> On behalf of the city of Jacksonville, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our annual Volunteer Committee Appreciation Dinner. Uh, calling volunteerism one of the hallmarks of American life, President Richard Nixon signed an executive order on April 20th, 1974, declaring that a week in April be dedicated as National Volunteer Week. This year marks the 40th anniversary of the, this executive order, and this year, April 6th through the 12th, has been designated as National Volunteer Week. The council and I, along with the city staff, wish to thank, thank you, for volunteering to serve on an advisory board for the city of Jacksonville. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us, for your wise counsel and guidance. Most of all, thank you for your time. Time that you could have spent with your family, friends, or some leisure activity that you wish to do. To each of you, we offer our sincere appreciation for your service to our community. Now I will ask John Carter, our city attorney, if he would please pronounce invocation, which will be followed by our introduction of the guest speaker. Mr. Carter. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, for your loving kindness and blessings and benefits upon our city of Jacksonville and upon us individually. We give thanks for the food that we have enjoyed and partaken of this evening and ask your blessings upon those who have prepared it for us. You have gifted each of us for service. You've given us time and you've given us talents. And we pray that always our service may be pleasing to you and might be a benefit to our fellow citizens. We pray for our military members who are serving us here and around the world, for their safety and for their anxious families. We also tonight remember our neighbors in Newburn who lost a brave police officer. We pray for his family and for Newburn and the mayor and council and the chief that you would support them through this tough time. We pray for the safety of our own men and women who serve us in public safety roles each and every day. All of this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Our speaker this evening exemplifies the meaning of volunteerism her many accomplishments and her volunteer spirit are truly extraordinary. After more than 20 years of service, Mrs. Dora Gaskin retired from the U.S. Army in 1995 as a lieutenant colonel. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and a Master's degree in Management. Her numerous awards include the Legion of Merit, Meritorious Service Medal, the Army Commendation Medal, and the Army Achievement Medal. In 2011, she was recognized as the Coastal Plains Area Volunteer of the Year for Special Olympics and also received Individual Distinguished Service Award from the Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities that same year. Mrs. Gaskins may be a native of New Orleans. I did not know that but says she is proud to call Jacksonville home. Her volunteer work includes serving on many levels as a member of the Campus June Key Volunteer Network, 
And in fact, in 2008, she and her team were honored for their tireless support to the spouses and families of Marines and sailors serving with the 2nd Marine Division. She is currently a member of the ONSO Commission for Persons with Disabilities and also serves as a public relations chairperson and the fundraising chairperson for the Special Olympics Onslow County. She has dedicated many hours to a cause close to her heart, special needs education in our local school system. Her lifetime goal has been to bridge the gap in the community for awareness and funding to support special needs individuals with mental disabilities. I want to welcome Ms. Gaskin, and also her husband is accompanying her tonight, re recently retired, Lieutenant General Gaskin. Uh, they're some, some of our, well, they've been here for a while, so they've been around a block, but, you know, we're very welcome that they've decided to call Jacksonville their home on retirement. But ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, Ms. Dora Gaskin. Thank you, Mayor and Mrs. Phillips, members of the council and staff, distinguished guests, volunteers. I am honored and humbled to be your guest speaker for tonight. Uh, before I start, are, is there anyone that has served in the Army besides myself here? Hey, okay. <laughs> and the reason I ask is because this is a strong uh, Marine, there's a strong presence of Marines in the community, and I need your backup for a joke I'm about to tell. Okay? <laughs> okay, well, here it is. The title of the joke is Volunteers, with a question mark. 11 men were clinging precariously to a wildly all over the place swinging rope suspended from a crumbling ridge on Mount Everest. Ten were Marines, one was an Army soldier. You know where this is going. <laughs> As a group, they decided that one of them had to let go. If that didn't happen, the rope would definitely break and everyone would perish. For an agonizing few moments, no one volunteered. Then finally, the Army soldier gave a truly touching speech saying he would sacrifice himself to save the lives of the others. All the Marines applauded. Hoorah! <laughs> <Ura. laughs> uh, okay. It's always good when you have a Marine in the area that will volunteer. <laughs> okay. With such a distinguished audience, I have no intentions to educate you on the topic that you all know so well, volunteering. However, I would like to share my thoughts about the volunteer spectrum. And I call it a volunteer spectrum because there is a continuous range of activities that you can do to promote goodness or improve the quality of life without expecting a monetary gift. According to the Bureau of Labor, about 62.6 million Americans volunteered between September 2012 and September 2013. The ages 35 through 44, 30.6% 30 volunteered. 20 to 24, 18.5% volunteered. And those over the age of 45, the rate uh, the target rate decreased as their age increased. And with the uh, youth 16 to 19, it was 26.2%. These are the stats that were reported. And I'm sure it's a lot higher because a lot of us do volunteer work in the community and it is not recorded or reported. The city of Jacksonville, the military community, and Onslow County have large hearts. And we all know that. Many of its citizens are on the volunteer spectrum. Some are able to give time, labor, and resources more than others. But most are willing to give if asked. 
It is not about the amount of giving, but it is the quality of giving. These volunteers are special, and their gift of time and resources are priceless. No deed is ever too small. Every individual has a personal reason for why they volunteer, but all have one thing in common. They make an impact on someone's life. There are many motivators for volunteering. Some feel needed, self-esteem, you want to share a skill, acquire a skill. You do it out of guilt. To meet potential friends, to help someone, you feel it is your civic duty. You want to build your resume. It keeps me busy. I feel important when I volunteer. It's therapy. It's a lot of fun. I want to develop a skill because someone asked me to volunteer. And my reason, you just want to feel good. And the list goes on and on. Whatever the reason, volunteering will build confidence, challenge your mind, body, and promote creativity. As I reflect back on my life, I have been volunteering from a very early age, in church, in school, with my family, for my family, candy cane girl, the little striped cute dress, uh, doing all of this without really calling it volunteering. I just wanted to help someone. I grew up in a household where you had to do something. You just couldn't sit around and do nothing. This was way before the video games and computers and everything. You had to get out and help in the community. Most memorable for me was when I was a young teenager, probably around 15, I'm a little seasoned now, I uh, volunteered to work with my church in the community. During the summer, I would see a lot of young kids, and I've always loved children, uh, one to be a big sister, just in the community, not doing much during the summer. Everybody's running around, nothing to do. So I had a little piano skills, not much, but I could hit a few cards. Uh, could sing a little bit offbeat. So I said, well, why not do a young choir with, with the babies from 5 to 12 years old? And I capped it at 12 because teenagers sometimes get difficult, uh, become difficult, and I was young myself. And with that idea, I went to the church, asked could I use their basement uh, to, to rehearse the kids and use the piano, and I was allowed to do that. I started off with five children, not realizing I was volunteering. I, it just made me feel good. And that summer, we put, it culminated with a choir of five. I made them cute little uniforms. I used to not to sew and still do a little bit. And we put on a concert for the show, and it culminated with a fashion show. Well, the next week, we had 10 more kids join. And then the next week, we had 10 more. And they all capped out at 12 years old. 12, you had to leave. You went on to church with the, uh, the older kids. Now. I say that's my most memorable uh, uh, contribution to volunteering because when I go back to New Orleans, that's my home, all of these kids are now adults, but I did not realize the impact I was having on their lives when I was that young and they were that young. We still reminisce about the times they all uh, spent with the Sunbeam Choir. And I called it Sunbeam because they all had just a ray of light around them. And they all wanted to do something. And my only rules were you had to listen to Dora. Dora was in charge. I liked being in charge. And if you didn't listen to Dora, you had to leave the group. And every year we put on a fashion show where it got to, there was a, a we had a large church. The church was filled. The choir started traveling throughout New Orleans, and this little simple chore that I did, or task that I did, without realizing I was volunteering, I did it because it made me feel good, had a profound impact on the lives of these kids that are now adults. Now, in between my youth and adult years, college, work, family, taking care of my Marine, I still found time to assist in the community and with the church and the family. Now, community is a very broad, to me, a very broad term. It involved helping the elderly with, with various chores, such as shopping, wrapping gifts, doing hair, playing cards with them, sitting and just listening to them. 
and any other thing that they asked me to do. I assisted the community in outdoor at projects, working with youth, holiday events, special needs forums, and any other activities that the community needed volunteers for. Some were a few hours, some were much longer. Basically, I was all over the volunteer spectrum, giving my time when I could, overseas in various locations and in numerous states that we've lived in, all because it made me feel good. After I retired from the military, or the Army, and grew into my seasoned years, I felt good still about volunteering. I asked myself four questions. What am I really good at? Where is my passion? What can I offer an organization? And four, how much time can I donate? For me, the first was, I knew I was good working with special needs children and young moms dealing with the reality that they have a child with special needs. Second, my passion was assisting these parents with how to be advocates for their child or children in some cases with special needs, i.e. military programs, IEP in schools, community programs, and just getting involved in activities with your child. Third, I could offer my experience, the ups and downs. Walt and I, we have a son that will be 25 on, 30, uh, on Thursday, and he is autistic. And lastly, I had a lot of time to offer. I'm blessed, I'm retired, retired, retired. <laughs> on the spectrum, my answer was, I felt I was best working with special needs when I answered all these questions. The special needs area, that's my passion. It is a broad area, and there's a lot of volunteering and a need for volunteering in that area. So my passion became to bridge the gap in the community for awareness and funding to support special needs individuals with mental disabilities. And yes, uh, having a son with autism, it had a big impact on why I have such a passion for this area. Thus, my volunteer work and recruiting others to extend a helping hand continues. This is my passion today, my snapshot passion today, but I still volunteer on the volunteer spectrum. One of the reasons my husband and I chose Jacksonville as our permanent home is because of all of you. The sense of community, your generosity towards giving, lending a helping hand to those in need of assistance to increase the quality of life. Jacksonville, the military, Onslow are very giving communities, is a very giving community on the volunteer spectrum. There are many opportunities for us all to volunteer in the community. Volunteers are the spine of many, many organizations. They give time, energy, labor without expecting a reward. Volunteering is giving of yourself with no expectation of anything in return. Tonight is special because you are being thanked by the city of Jacksonville for your service. In closing, I'd like to share one of my favorite songs with you. Just an excerpt. If I could help somebody as I pass along, if I could cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I could show somebody how they are traveling wrong, then my living is not in vain. These words of the song, If I Could Help Somebody, inspired me as a young child and had a profound impact on my life. I challenge all of you to continue to volunteer and remembering, and remember that volunteering is good for the heart and soul, and you will not be living in vain. Thank you.
All right, I just want to say that you have inspired me to jump in the ocean in the middle of January. <laughs> Make sure, Janice, I don't chicken out this time. Make up some lame excuse for not doing it. Very inspiring, Dor and thank you very much for being with us tonight. Uh, that's, that's very inspirational. Uh, and thanks a lot, of, again, for adopting Jacksonville as your home. You know, it's pleased to have you here, extremely pleased to have you here. So now uh, we're going to recognize some of our committees, liaisons, and staff. And we have a few recognitions we are going to make this evening. But before we get to that, I'd like to acknowledge each of the advisory committees along with their uh, liaison and staff. Uh, we have the uh, Board of Adjustment that's with us tonight. I'd like to ask the uh, members of the Board of Adjustment that are present tonight along with their liaison from the City Council, Councilman Jerry Bittner, if y'all would stand, please. <laughs> from our Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committees, I'd like to ask the members and staff of the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee to please stand, along with their council liaison, Councilwoman Angela Washington. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to ask the members and staff of the Planning Advisory Board and their council liaison, Councilman Bob Warden, to please stand. I'd like to ask now the members uh, and staff of the Community Development Advisory Committee and Council Liaison, Council Member uh, Jerome Willingham to stand. I haven't seen Jerome tonight. I also would like to ask the members and staff of the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee and their Council Liaison, uh, Jerome Willingham, if you would please stand and be recognized. And I'd like to ask the members and staff of the Water and Sewer Advisory Committee and their council liaison, council member Randy Thomas, if you would please stand. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to uh, also take a moment uh, to acknowledge the supporting services that are provided to our advisory committees by the staff of the city clerk's office. We have all of them here tonight. I think everybody's present and accounted for. If y'all would stand up. <laughs> our city manager's office. I know Deb's out there, Ron, Lynn, John. and our video media staff that are posted around the rooms with the cameras and Kevin. <clears throat> Thank you all very much for taking part in what your city does. Uh, without you, uh, we would be missing a, vital, uh, a vitally important uh, opportunity to gain import insight from citizens that know better than us what's best for Jacksonville sometimes. So, you know, it's very good to have that input. We have uh, two special recognitions that we'd like uh, to make tonight that we are most honored to bestow. I mean, these are so well deserved. I would like to take this moment to ask Dr. Walter Oberry if you would join me up front. <clears throat> Stand right there. <laughs> I'm going to stand over here for a minute. <laughs> Dr. Oberry served continuously on the planning board for almost 21 years from 1984 to 2005. He served as the vice chairman in 1990 and as a chairman in 1991 and 1992. Dr. Oberry is remembered for his leadership to the board, his desire to keep the process moving and his love of knowing that Jacksonville was growing and progressing. When asked about Dr. O'Berry, 
Sandra Wyrick, former planning board chairperson, said, quote, I first met Dr. Walter O'Berry in August of 1987. For almost 20 years, he was my mentor on the Jacksonville Planning Board. She continued, with his knowledge and the expertise he had, we were able to instigate many changes in Jacksonville. From day one, sitting next to him on the planning board, he knew what Jacksonville could be by drawing on our strengths and the unique character of this community to realize what Jacksonville holds in the future. Today, most of his influence is felt across this community. He wanted a positive image of the entire community and he instilled pride in the area's history as well as its character. Dr. O'Berry had a positive image of Jacksonville which to this day continues. The first professional planner the city ever hired was Horace Mann. He remembers Walter O'Berry as dedicated to the mission of the planning board. While Horace was planner, the planning board was notably reactionary. There was little time for planning other than for the general land use type and zoning. Dr. O'Berry's leadership kept that moving and during his tenure, there began an effort to help make the planning board more forward looking. It was during his time on the board that former Mayor George Jones began a process that we later came to know as growth management. This was supported by Walter O'Berry and today's planning advisory board. It now is engaged in much more than being reactionary. During his years of service, Dr. O'Berry was involved with many notable events. One was the adoption of the sign ordinance, which had much interest from the business community and those in favor of beautification and appearance issues. Dr. O'Berry knew many on both sides of the issue and through a process that the Chamber of Commerce helped to facilitate, a new ordinance was proposed that was easily adopted by the City Council. His tenure also saw a special period of rapid growth, first in the residential building, then in commercial growth. It spanned a period of time in which the city moved from accommodation of growth to conscious and thoughtful consideration of the effects of growth, development, and future land use. It is for those reasons that today we recognize the service of Dr. Walter O'Berry, both as a planning board member and as chairman and to bestow upon him the grateful appreciation of this city for his service towards making this a better place to live, work, and play. Your dedication and your volunteer service is appreciated and worthy of recognition during this special observance. <clears throat> In grateful appreciation to Dr. Walter O'Berry for his ser dedicated services from 1984 to 2005 in making this a better place to live, work, and play. Presented April 1st, 2014. Thank you. Thank you. Still riding the bike, Every chance I get. Keep on pedaling, sir. Keep on pedaling. <laughs> okay, that's very nice, isn't it? Very nice. Our next award goes to Mr. Nick Herrera, who unfortunately could not uh, be with us tonight due to an unexpected illness. Uh, he asked uh, us to call upon his good friend, Mr. Lauren Jones, to, account, uh, to accept on his behalf. And I would ask Lauren if you would step up now, please. Thanks for coming.
Mr. Nicarera served continuously for 25 years as an advocate for trails in the service of the city. He was first called on to be on the trail study committee. That led to be a, a successful determination to proceed with trail, trails in the city and with it the Jacksonville Trails and Greenways Commission was created. He served not only as a member but as a vice chairman in 1994 and chairman in 1997. With the reorganization of the advisory committees, he became a member of the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee. The first appointment connected to trails came in October of 1989 when he was appointed to the Ad Hoc Trail Study Committee. The short-term mission of the committee was to research the viability of Rails to Trails initiative in Jacksonville and to report back to council. And then following the study, the final study, committee report, council created the Trails and Greenways Commission in April of 1991, to which Mr. Herrera was appointed as an inaugural member. He served on trails on the Trails and Greenways Commission continuously from its inception until it merged with the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee during the reorganization of April 2012. Mr. Herrera then served on the Recreation and Parks Committee until February 2014, at which time he submitted his resignation, feeling that his hearing loss affected his ability to provide meaningful contributions to the committee. When asked fellow Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee member Lauren Jones called Nick an inspiration. You remember that? Yes, sir. He was an inspiration. He is an inspiration. Is. Yes. Is. Mr. Jones uh, was training for his first half marathon. You ran a half marathon? That's a long ways. <laughs> and wanted to learn more than wanted to learn more about running. So Mr. Nick Herrera answered all of my questions patiently and was even there the day of the race to congratulate me at the finish line said Lauren. Anyone you talk to about Mr. Herrera will tell you that he is truly an inspiration. Former Recreation Director Mike Carter also called Nick an inspiration and added that he was de dedicated to trails, greenways, and the racing community. He noted the former active duty Sergeant Major brought that discipline of the Corps to his leisure time activities and was very detailed. His persistence and advocacy led to the creation of the Trails and Greenways 5K and then a 10K was added. Carter and the former city manager Ken Hagen both agreed that without the leadership of Nick, the city's trails would not have been constructed in the manner that they were. Both also agreed that Nick got past the many no's that he heard during his tenure with the city. Ken Hagen also indicated that Nick's service to the nation left a legacy there and that he, lives, he leaves a legacy for the racing and trail using a community. He has helped bridge that military and civilian community. This community has benefited from the service of Sergeant Major Nick Herrera. He served our country meritoriously as an active duty Marine and he, was ser he has served this city as a community member. That service has benefited those who live here now and many who will never know, know him at all. And I'm sure a lot of you here that know Nick Herrera in this room know what an inspiration he is. We and those who come, uh, come after us, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we and those who come after us will be able to testify as to his influence and accomplishments. It's for that reason that we wish to bestow this special recognition to Nick Herrera. And this is a what we created for Nick for extraordinary service of 25 years on the Trails and Greenways Commission and the Recreation and Parks Advisory Committee as an advocate for trails and in making this a better place to live work and play, presented April 1st, 2014. Let's give it up for Nick. I can wait to come down later and I can get Nick down to the, and have him a picture there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is he doing all right? Huh? Yeah, he is. He's, uh, as has been stated, he's a little bit under the weather. Uh, but at Nick's age, I think he's probably entitled to that. 
Uh, but he is, he's very appreciative of all who put this together. Uh, as has already been stated, uh, he's uh, been not only an inspiration to myself, but to many others. I wasn't the only one that he would greet at the finish line as well. So uh, on behalf of my good friend Nick, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, if it's the same Nick Herrera I know, that Sergeant Major, Major's a hard nut to crack, so I, don't, I think you'll be back with us before too long. Before we end the evening, I want to take a moment to reflect on the uh, meaning behind National Volunteer Week. According to the Points of Light Volunteer Foundation, National Volunteer Week is about inspiring, recognizing, and encouraging people to engage in their communities. It is about demonstrating that by working together, we can meet challenges and accomplish our goals for a better community. On behalf of myself and the City Council, thank you for working together with us to help make Jacksonville the kind of community we all want it to be. Not only for ourselves and our children and grandchildren, but for many future generations to come. Thank you all so much for coming this, this evening and have a wonderful evening.